in data science there are knowledge areas which is heavily statistics focused there are knowledge areas which are heavily domain focused and there are knowledge areas which are heavily it focused and cloud technology is one such area which is very very heavily it focused and that is the reason many people coming from different background than it do not feel quite comfortable with cloud technologies okay and let me tell you guys gone are the days when you say in an interview that well i don't have any exposure to cloud technology and still you used to get a job nowadays in good organizations your resume may not get shortlisted if you don't put cloud technologies at all i am here to solve the same problem for the people who find it very very difficult to learn cloud technologies i am going to create a series of videos which will help you to number 1 clear interviews and answer cloud based questions number 2 getting your hands dirty with aws and number 3 building deploying your models and how to use various components of cloud technologies how to be quite comfortable so that tomorrow in a project you are given a cloud project you are quite comfortable to work on that let's see one by one guys and let's start with the basics video first in this video we are going to learn about basics of aws for data science okay and what are the topics we are going to cover we are going to see what and why of cloud computing non bookish definition not the bookish definition okay then why we are learning aws why not gcp or microsoft azure i am going to tell you that public versus private versus hybrid cloud what is the difference very very important and interview question how to create your own aws account many people have confusion around this i will show you how to create it storing your first file in cloud how to do that very very easily i will show you you can do it parallelly with me and how to access your file via browser that you have stored in the cloud okay aws cloud let's see all these one by one guys first of all what and why of cloud computing pay attention here guys this is a non bookish definition very very important to understand okay so i will not take any other example i will take my example so aman is a data scientist okay aman is a data scientist aman wants to create one or two data science courses okay and he wants to host it somewhere so currently there is a website called www.unfolddatascience.com okay so you can open it in browser i am going to show you also this is to relate why do we need cloud computing okay so this is the website unfolddatascience.com let me go to that website and show you how it looks like so this is how the website looks like now unfolddatascience.com and i have couple of courses here so what is happening right now is for a moment just think that there are 10 students who have purchased this course okay but tomorrow i don't know if 10 students or 100 students or 10000 students will purchase my course okay that is my problem number 1 problem number 2 is i want to ensure that nobody should be able to download this course and use it in a wrong way i mean resell it or something like that that is the security part what is the third part i want to be ensuring i want to be ensuring this course is available in india in usa um in australia in london in let's say uae all the geographies this course is available and same content same latent i mean low latency same kind of quality in terms of video is available at all the locations okay and i want to ensure that if i want to migrate my entire thing to some some other platform tomorrow or if i want to host it to somewhere else that process should be easy i have explained here four things guys what i explained you the first thing i explained you is scalability okay so that is my first need why that is my first need because now let's say 100 students are buying my course tomorrow 10 10000 students god knows tomorrow 1 million students may buy my course so my platform should be able to support for that i should scale up my backend right i should scale up my server wherever i am hosting my course that platform has to be scalable okay then i told you it should be secure okay so that nobody is able to use it in a bad way nobody is able to download it resell it all those kind of things security comes there 
then comes flexibility flexibility means tomorrow i want to use it in some other platform or i want to migrate my courses or i want to add a new chapter new module more um, you know data examples more python notebooks or more uh, programming examples whatever it is it has to be flexible okay and then i told you it should be accessible in uae india china australia usa uk all over the globe it should be accessible so it should be reliable okay now understand my problem guys i am a one person okay i don't have a team so i am the one who is creating the courses i am the one who is hosting that on the on that server so um, you know from your from your normal understanding you can think that i should focus more on creating good content course or i should focus more on these things both are equally important but where is my expertise lying my expertise is lying in data science right so i can create very good quality courses in data science but i cannot ensure all these things because you know that is not my expertise somebody else should take care of that okay and all these all these things are needed in my business so you can think this is a business where you know one thing is product one thing is what is my business so my business is you know creating courses and hosting it somewhere but there is it part of it as well it part of it means it should run in a smooth way it should be available it should be secure it should be reliable okay and here comes the non bookish or non formal definition of what you hear as cloud computing so what cloud computing tells you is you take care of your business and you give all your it to me you give me some money i will take care of all your it part so everything here is it okay everything here comes under the it management or it infra or it side of the business you can say this is the product side of the business okay this is it side of the business now imagine uh, here i spoke about one simple course okay suppose you talk of big big organizations who are making shampoos um, some famous hair care products some big big pharma companies right they should focus more on their research their business how to grow market how to do advertisement etc right and less on how it will be managed that is where cloud computing or all these cloud service provider comes into picture what they say is you give us money i am writing here you give us money okay i take care of your it i take care of your it this definition guys remember this and you will never confuse what is the meaning of cloud computing okay this is the basic simple meaning so i take my entire content i take all my data i host it on a cloud service provider now i am using this word many times cloud service provider cloud service provider is an organization or entity that provides cloud computing services or that sells cloud computing services okay some of the big players in this space are aws standing for amazon cloud services gcp google cloud platform and microsoft azure okay why i am writing these three names is um, only these three uh, capture almost 70% 65% plus that is for sure i think it will be reaching 70% now of cloud computing market okay and why i am focusing on aws in this series is aws itself is roughly 33% of the total global market capture okay so one third of total global market of cloud computing is aws itself cloud service provider as a service provider okay that is the reason we are learning aws so what is the simple definition of cloud guys this service provider tells you you give us money and i take care of your it okay what is the meaning of taking care of your it guys one simple example i will give you okay let's say uh, in your computer you have a file okay this file this one file is your let's say um let's say uh, daily workout schedule okay so daily you go to gym and this is daily workout schedule okay schedule and there is another file i will call it this is let's say file 1 there is another file file 2 this is you know what this is your monthly expense monthly 
expense calculator okay so first file file one you use how many times in a month you use 30 times in a month i am thinking you go to gym daily 30 times in a month you use this file and this file you know how many times you use in a month only once okay one time in a month obviously as a normal practice what we do we want to keep these kind of files on desktop so that we can easily access it okay some files which we don't you know normally access we keep it on some d drive some inside folders right and we expect low latency here what we expect low latency low latency means if i want to open this file this file should open fast right i should be able to access this fast and this file even if it takes some time i don't bother because you know i do it monthly once so in spite of doing you all these things i mean this is just a part of what cloud computing can do but what I'm trying to tell you is, in addition to normal things in your IT, it makes your IT infrastructure smart also. Smart means cloud computing will enable you to have low latency on frequently accessed file and kind of little high latency on files which are less frequently accessed. Of course, at the cost of money, they will charge you more for these kind of files, less for these kind of files. Okay, we will see in the demo now, don't worry. So these are some of the basics of cloud computing guys you need to understand. So what is cloud computing? I told you for any business, if you want cloud computing provider to take care of your IT and that that becomes your clouding, cloud some service provider and entire thing that happens on their platform is called cloud computing, okay? And why cloud computing? Because businesses want to focus on their core business, not on the IT side of it and they want to you know, utilize their bandwidth in focusing on business growth, not on the IT side of it. And that makes sense also, right? And why not? If somebody is giving all these things at a low cost, you know, people will go and take it. Okay. So we will see into detail, but this is just a non-bookish to understand kind of definition. You can relate to Unfold Data Science website and try to understand this. Okay. Why we are learning AWS, I already told you. Now, I will tell you there are three different variants of or three different kinds of services that cloud service provider can give you, okay? So who are cloud service provider again? AWS, GCP, and Azure kind of guy. Here we are talking about AWS in particular. Now guys, suppose in Unfold Data Science website, what all things from the IT point of view I need to take care, okay? Suppose in Unfold Data Science website, from IT point of view, what are the things I need to take care? I will just keep writing here, okay? So that I'll, I'll tell you what is the difference between three types of services that we take from cloud with example, not by bookish definition, okay? First of all, I should have application. Application means I'm hosting my courses, right? So courses should be there, quizzes should be there, um, assignments should be there. So that is part of my application, okay? Then comes my data. Data is nothing but my user data, my uh, you know, maintenance of my users or addition of new user or deletion of user or um, what uh, what file formats I'm using, what files I'm adding, right? Application, data. I'm just looking at my notebook so that I should not miss any anything. Runtime. The meaning of runtime is when my application runs, then it should be managed in a proper way so that front-end users are not facing any issues, okay? Then comes middleware. Middleware means, is it calling to some APIs or is it is it doing some kind of communication with the backend, right? That part will come into picture. And then comes the operating system where it is running, on which OS it is running. And then comes virtualization, if any. It is not always needed, but if any virtualization is happening, which means if it is running on any VM or any virtual servers, then that will come into picture. And then comes what servers is getting used, okay? And then comes what storage is getting used, okay? And then comes what networking is getting used, network, okay? Now I will write here three terms, guys. I'm sure you have heard about this. One is called infrastructure as a service, okay? I-A-A-S. One is called platform as a service, P-A-A-S and one is called software as a service, okay? Don't forget all the definitions that you know about all these things, okay? Again, relate to Unfold Data Science. So 
what all should be taken care when a course hosted on unfold data science website is accessed by a student okay application data runtime middleware all these may not be applicable for all the applications for example let's say i'm i'm hosting on a local machine and from local only i'm accessing so virtualization will not come into picture i'm not using any vm okay similarly um, i'm using you know um, storage local storage so storage is not very complex in that case but overall all these things will come into picture if i am running a full fledged application okay remember what i'm going to tell you now this is a interview question people will ask you suppose aman does not use any cloud services suppose aman does not use any cloud services and maintains runs the website the platform by himself so what all things aman is responsible for aman is responsible for everything from here to here okay everything from here to here aman is responsible because aman is not outsourcing kind of his it aman is not using any cloud service aman is responsible for all these things okay take a moment guys try to understand now suppose aman aman's business grows and aman wants to you know give some part of it to a cloud service provider so aman decides that i will take care of from applications till os okay from applications till os i will take care of my application i will take care of my data i will take care of my runtime middleware and os but but i want the cloud service provider to give me virtualization if any i will use your servers i will use your storage i will use your network this becomes infrastructure as a service simple definition okay from the cloud platform what you are taking what you are renting is infrastructure what infrastructure you are renting virtualization servers storage and network capabilities of the cloud service provider fine when we see the aws console i will show you what all comes under these categories don't worry okay so infrastructure as a service is basically you give me the infra rest of the things i will take care so you give me the storage you give me the server rest of the things i will take care so that is kind of least use of cloud platform you can say and mostly the company or the enterprise or the business itself is managing most of the things this becomes your iaas standing for infrastructure as a service now what happens in platform as a service in platform as a service everything right from run run time everything right from run time till end will be managed by cloud service provider okay so what you are managing you are just managing your application and data what you are managing you are just managing your application and data so if you want to add a new feature in the application if you want to as a um, you know add, uh, uh, delete a feature from your application if you want to do something with your data those things you manage apart from that everything is managed by cloud service provider that is the definition of platform as a service i will give you examples in all th in these three categories okay and then comes software as a service what happens in software as a service everything is managed by cloud service provider you just use that software okay everything happens on cloud you just use the software as an end user examples in software as a service category here are some examples i have noted guys you must be using something known as dropbox i am sure you have heard this sorry dropbox dropbox is nothing but a cloud uh, storage given to you uh, where you can store file retrieve later so what you are doing here you are just using software as a service you are not managing application nothing you are doing you are just as an end user you are using dropbox to store your files very simple microsoft 365 okay your excel your powerpoint your word all these things what you are doing you are using those applications you don't bother about how the runtime is how the middleware is how the virtualization is how the server is how the storage is if you are in a you know um, aws uh, sorry azure cloud kind of platform okay 
Then one more example I will give you, which most of you would have used, Cisco WebEx, okay? Cisco WebEx. In Cisco WebEx, what you use? You use just the front end, just the application. You don't care what is the software code written, what is the storage written, uh, how much data I will be storing, where it will get stored. You just do the meeting, your file gets stored, later you can you know, get that file. That's all, end of the story. All these are example of software as a service where you are an end user, okay? Now suppose you are not an end user, you are a team of developers. So here you are managing some bit of IT, some bit of IT you are managing, your application you are managing, your data you are managing. You just say to cloud guys, hey, give me your platform, okay? I want to host you my application on your platform. Give me your platform, that's all. Okay, that's all I need. I have the expertise to manage my application and data. Those guys will give you. And one kind of example here will be Heroku. If some of you have hosted your application on Heroku, you know, data science application or any kind of web app, you will see that you are managing your code, you are managing your um, data, you are managing code means you are managing your application. Cloud service provider is giving you everything right from runtime to virtualization to middleware, everything, okay? So this is, you know, middle middle level IT expertise, okay? Middle level IT expertise. This is zero IT, software as a service, zero IT expertise. Platform as a service, middle level IT expertise. And infrastructure as a service means more IT expertise. You are saying, hey, just give me the infra, I will take care of rest of the things, okay? So here you will just take the infra and you can do whatever you want. So many kind of application which are hosted on the cloud and being managed by um, um, individual organizations, okay? That can come under infrastructure as a service. For example, some of the CRM applications, organizations host on the cloud, some of the invoicing applications, some organization host on the cloud, they want to keep their data secure and they want to have most of the control apart from just they are renting the apartment you can say for example you rent apartment to stay whatever you do in the apartment that's your business right you rent the servers you rent the storage then you do whatever you mean so anybody asks you the difference between ias pas sas remember the difference sas least control all the control is with cloud service provider, PES, mid-level control, IAS, more control. These are the things that will be controlled by cloud service provider in all these categories, okay? So this is basic of three different types of services that cloud computing provider, cloud service provider will provide you. In all these categories, you will see different, different components. We will show you in AWS, I will show you in AWS console, okay? Now one simple and straightforward concept I want to cover here, guys. Uh, suppose this is your cloud, okay? Uh, cloud service provider or, you know, cloud you can say, and this is your another cloud, okay? So there is a terminology called public cloud, okay? One simple concept here, public cloud, and there is a concept called private cloud, okay? Private cloud, and there is a concept of hybrid cloud hybrid cloud, okay? So guys, you have to understand what is the difference between public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. Suppose I'm, I want to host and fold data science website on AWS, okay? So I will, I don't care much about my data security because it's it's like, you know, a student's name and email ID. It's not very, very sensitive data, okay? A student's name and email ID and my, my course files, right? So what I will do is I will look for a little cheaper option to host in AWS and the cheapest option is using public cloud, okay? Public cloud means wherever you are hosting your application or wherever in the in the cloud, the cloud service provider is allowing you to host it in a public space where somebody else can also host their application. It will be secure of course by multiple security protocols, but in public cloud, many uh, many customers of the cloud service provider can use the application to keep it very simple, okay? But think of a scenario where it's a bank, okay? It's a bank. In the bank, the data is very, very sensitive. Customer's account balance, card number, PIN, you know, debit card PIN or CVV number, etc. So 
banks will not want to use the public cloud because by mistake if something happens okay then their data may get they are afraid that though the cloud service provider say that your data will not get exposed but they are afraid that it may get exposed and also there are a lot of security protocols they need to follow on their data so if you want to store something sensitive on the cloud okay remember this if you want to store something sensitive which which is very very sensitive and very very private then you will use private cloud if you want to you know store or use cloud service provider for normal things not too sensitive you will use a cost effective method or cost effective flavor that is known as public cloud okay mostly in any organization it will be a mix of both so they go for hybrid cloud why there are three different concepts guys in terms of dollar you know charge that cloud service provider will pay uh, you know uh, charge you for the service right it will be least in public cloud it will be highest in private cloud and it will be somewhere mid level in hybrid cloud okay but sometimes if you want to store sensitive data or banks do not want to compromise they will go for private cloud otherwise hybrid cloud and public cloud for good for the businesses where uh, we want a cost effective solution we are a small business and um, we don't want you know uh, not not lot of uh, security protocols we have to follow on the data etc just an example i give you now there are more differences to this for example uh, if you if you say who is the owner of a private cloud so here company itself will be the owner of this cloud okay in terms of owner i'm saying owner is company okay who is the owner of a public cloud owner is cloud service provider owner is cloud service provider okay and in the hybrid cloud also owner is company company means if unfold data science then unfold data science is the owner of this okay so you can compare public hybrid and private cloud in terms of uh, many things for example if you ask me where the scal scalability and flexibility will be more obviously in public cloud it will be more because private cloud there will be again lot of restrictions coming lot of protocols coming right if you ask me where the charges will be less of course public cloud if you ask me who will own this guy will own if you ask me what is the reliability and what is the security obviously hybrid cloud will have more security private cloud will have more security than public cloud okay so somebody asks you the difference you have a overall idea i will not explain you more i don't want to confuse you i want to go to the lab fast okay now what we learned guys we learned public private hybrid cloud i also explained you how do you uh, differentiate between infrastructure as a service platform and software as a service now it's high time let's go and do some lab guys um let's create your first this is called aws management console okay and i am logged into this but what you can do is you can go to google and search for aws management console aws stands for amazon web service one of the leading cloud service provider and my entire playlist or my entire series will depend on aws itself okay so if i go to aws management console here then what you can do guys you can see uh button here to create a new account okay so here you will click on this i think i'm logged in so it is taking to my account let me log out first give me a moment let me log out okay so this is my sign in to console okay and is it remembering my password no it is not remembering my password so first you have to do guys what create a new aws account if you don't have an account okay and here first thing they will ask you is create your aws account with an email id give a email id here give a email id here they will send you a passcode okay that passcode you enter here give a email id for example abc abc at xyz.com okay and you enter your name so for example dummy name okay and then you say verify email address if you say they will send you a passcode enter that passcode here and it will take you to the next step next step they will ask you your name address and credit card or debit card number now remember guys without credit card or debit card your account may not get created so when i 
added my credit card, Indian credit card, just two rupees, I think got debited. Okay, just two rupees. So don't be afraid guys, you can add your credit card or debit card, just two rupees to INR, okay? Two rupees will get deducted from your card just to ensure that you are adding a valid card, okay? Do that until or unless you use some heavy service, Amazon will not charge you. Don't be afraid, you can add that. I will also show you how you can control your budget, okay? So once you do that, then you are good. It's like normal, um, any, any kind of account creation, okay? And then you have your user ID and password created as a root because you will be honor root user email address you give, which means you are the master of that account. You are the owner of that account, okay? Using root, you can create. Once you create, you will come to something known as AWS Management Console. So I am a root user. I have created my account. This is my user ID password. I have saved it. Let me try logging in. It is asking me again. Let me try. Okay. So I'm inside AWS Management Console, which means Amazon Web Service Management Console. If you are doing with me, congratulations. You are inside the first cloud service provider, AWS, okay? Now, I told you there are a lot of services that cloud, uh, you know, service provider will provide. Let's see what are the services. So, for example, I told you in storage, in storage, they will provide you different kind of services. So, see, for example, I'm in storage, okay? So, here, AWS backup is one category of storage, okay? AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery is another category of storage, okay? So in one liner, they are trying to tell what is the use of these storage. So scalable cost-effective application recovery, okay? S3 is scalable storage in cloud, simple one. S3 Glacier is archive storage in the cloud. In my next session, I will cover in more detail different storage and what are the functionalities provided in different storage. For now, just you remember, I gave you one example, guys. You remember, I gave you one example of file being used regularly and not being used regularly. So Amazon Web Service enables you to become smart and save cost based on what is the, um, how many times you want to use that file, okay? And if you see multiple types of storage, all these is trying to serve one or other kind of um, service to you. For example, if you say Glacier, Glacier is one kind of archive. Okay. So it will not be, a, it will not focus on low latency. It will focus on low cost. Okay. And then managed file storage, EFS volume. EFS is applicable for something which you need many times. And there are different purposes of different files. Okay. What we are going to do is we are going to go to S3, which is known as scalable storage in the cloud. Okay. Let's open this S3. All of you can open this. S3 is basically your, you can say, um, one root storage, uh, you know, one kind of storage, simple storage service in cloud. Okay. So let's come here and I want to explain you if you want to, what, what we are going to do now is we are going to upload one file in the cloud. Okay. And I want to tell you something here, guys, from theory, then you, uh, we will create that. Okay. In S3, what happens is in S3, there are two concepts, okay? One is called a bucket, bucket, and another is called an object, okay? What is a bucket, guys? A bucket is a common repository kind of thing, okay? So this is a common repository. Inside one bucket, you can have multiple objects. Multiple objects means multiple files you can upload, no matter what is your format, video, audio, zip file, etc. whatever is your format, multiple formats, multiple files, multiple varieties, multiple things, you can store, I'm making different shapes to tell you that, multiple flavors of file you can have inside a bucket. And what is your object? Object is your actual files or actual data. I will tell one more time. You cannot have, you cannot store file in AWS without creating a bucket. You create a bucket first. In this bucket, you store whatever you want. Those are called objects. Let's see by demo. Okay. Guys, if you're liking the video so far, please don't forget to press the like button 
and drop a comment saying that you want these kind of videos. So come here, come here and say create bucket. Click on create bucket and name here. So unfold DS bucket, bucket uh, first, let me say this, okay? Unfold DS bucket first and I'm not, uh, I'm not kind of uh, doing anything else. I'm just going with default settings. Now you remember guys, I told you, uh, I will access this, whatever I'm storing in this bucket, I will access this using open internet, okay? So I will just uncheck this. This is a dangerous thing to do, but I will uncheck this so that public access is enabled. If I check this, it will block all public access. Later also I can change this, but okay, let me change later only, okay? So bucket, I'm for now I'm blocking all public access. Okay, simple. Now let's go here and create bucket. Okay, what it says, some error. Bucket name must not contain uppercase character. Okay, fine. So unfold bucket first. Let's go here and create a bucket. So what we are creating a bucket inside this bucket, we can store multiple files. Okay, so I will go here and I will upload any file. Now, if I go to my local machine, guys, there is a file called upload to AWS, this file. Okay, and I want to upload this file in cloud now. So see the magic of cloud now, and you can also parallelly upload one of your file, add file, add file, go to my downloads, upload to AWS, take this and say upload. Okay, uploaded now. So now my file that you saw in my downloads folder is uploaded where? Amazon S3, which means cloud service provider. Okay, and upload status is done. I will say close. Now this is my file guys, okay? In this file, there is something known as copy S3 URI. Copy S3 URI means in the world of Amazon S3, what is the uniform resource name for this or uniform resource identifier, okay? And then there is something called copy URL. Copy URL means it will give me a public URL. Now let's go here and try to paste this, okay? And let's see what happens. See here, the XML file does not have permission. See, access denied. Do you know why access is denied? Because I don't have public access for that file, okay? Let's try to go and change it. So another thing we have to do here is go to this new bucket that we have created and go to the permission and we have to edit the bucket policy. Now, what is bucket policy, guys? Since we want to access it from outside, from open internet, so we have to say to AWS that give this access to open internet or make this bucket available to the public, okay? How to do that? This bucket policy is basically a JSON file, but to a new person, it will be difficult to write that JSON file. So there is a very good graphical user interface where you can generate the uh, policy, okay? If you go to policy generator here, first say select policy type. So you can go here and say S3 bucket policy, okay? Second thing it comes here, what I want to do, I want to allow, okay? And I will say principal is star, okay? AWS, I will say, let it be uh, this, and here I will say all services, all actions. So Amazon S3 is the one, one uh, you know, in this service we are trying to do, okay? So not in all services, Amazon S3 service. And here action, I'll say all action. This is a dangerous thing to do, which means delete the bucket, update the bucket, etc. I'm giving a public permission. But for showing purpose, I can do that. Otherwise, what you can do is you can go here and select, you know, get object access or read access or delete access, etc. Okay, for now I am saying add all actions. And then one important thing is Amazon resource name. Amazon resource name is nothing but your bucket ARN. ARN, wherever it says ARN, it's Amazon resource name. Copy this and come here to the policy generator. Come here to the policy generator and paste it. Okay, and then you say add statement. Once you have added statement, then what you can do is you can click on generate policy. It will give you a policy. Copy this, come here and paste here. Okay. So if you see here, what, what is this? This is a policy that is this version. Version is taking default from my previous policy actually. 
then statement ID, then S3, then allow, then on this bucket and principal is star. Let me try adding this. Okay. So it has got added. And now my bucket should be publicly available. Let me go here and let me refresh it. It should show me public in, in this bucket as well, the other bucket. Okay. So you can see it is public. Now let me try open this URL. Let me try refresh this from the open internet. Again, it does not open. It says access denied. Can you guess what is the reason for this guys? Let me tell you in the bucket policy, we have given the access up to bucket only, not up to the objects. So come here in the permission, in the bucket policy, edit this, okay? And if you are familiar with file structure, here I am saying up to the bucket, I have to say slash star so that it is applicable to all the objects inside that bucket and save changes, okay? Once I save changes and I go and I try to refresh the page, as you can see here from the open internet, you are able to access the file which is there on the Amazon S3 bucket in the cloud environment. Now this file is more secure, this file is more reliable, this file is can be version can be controlled, okay? And Amazon will charge me if I am, you know, using something which is not in free tier, but up to 12 months, there are many things which is in free tier. So guys, what all we learned today? We learned about uh, starting from basics of cloud computing to different uh, services that cloud provide, different types of cloud, creating your account, storing your first file, and what are the settings you need to do to access your file from the open internet. In the next lecture, I'm going to tell you more about um, what are the different varieties of storage and what are the things that you will be very, very surprised to see that all these things you wanted in your application and cloud provides you all these things very, very simply and easily, okay? Give me a thumbs up guys if you like this video and you want me to continue on this series by likes and comments. I will see you all in the next video wherever you are. Stay safe and take care.